Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here in Dale and we have the Dwarves and the men of Dale here defending against the evil Eastlings who have marched under the banner of Sauron to claim Dale for themselves. We have a glorious 4v4 here as we have uh, two Eastling armies already moving towards the Dwarven resistance outside the city and then inside we have another two uh, Dalian armies defending against the Eastling armies here. So yeah, going to be excited to see how this one goes down. Already the city is looking pretty damaged from a pretty long siege before the battle has begun. Already breaches have been opened up and the city is already partly on fire with the uh, defenders getting a minus two morale debuff already. But uh, yeah, they've got some pretty strong defenses in here. We've got some good uh, units like Delian Swords. We've got rank upon rank of dwarves outside the walls to help defend as well. And uh, they've got a whole host of archers here. But the evil men are, uh, you know, pretty well trained. The uh, Locurum of these things are a pretty, uh, like, strong match. We've got Clan Guards. Uh, we've got Runic Axemen, which I'm pretty sure... Oh, no, maybe they're not the Runic Axe... Uh, Runic, Runic Warriors. Uh, there's the other Axe unit, though, somewhere that uh, has all the Javelins. And we have a whole bunch of Shock Infantry Runic Warlords, which I didn't realize they've been renamed. And uh, we've got Runic Savages as well, and a whole host of other stuff. And there you go, already the fight is getting underway. A charge from the Storm Riders coming in here, and they're hitting these Dwarven lines pretty hard with their Cataphract-type Cav units there. And yeah, not a bad charge there. On to uh, the Erebor Axe Warriors already inflicting a decent amount of losses onto them. Um, but yes, if you're enjoying Dawnless Days on the channel, would like to see some more Lord of the Rings action, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here. The and the commentary support area does help out the channel. And uh, as you can see here, we've got more Storm Riders looking around in this forest, looking for opportunities to go after some targets. It looks like it could be a Mantra Claimers on the, uh, on the menu here. And we'll see how this one goes. Another charge coming in. All the Storm Riders get it off. No trouble at all there. Going in the shock entry behind as well. Not a bad target at all there from the cab. I mean, the dwarves can't really do much about this. It. They've got no spears. It's counter this at all. He's got to kind of just watch on as they get charged. And uh, we now are having the shock infantry arrive on the front lines here. So we've got Beriag warriors going in. And they are going to start hacking and slashing through this dwarven sword line. But yeah, this was a battle that we did on the stream quite a while ago. It was uh, part of like, the showcase of the new Golden Stays uh, update. So yes, if you want to get involved in any sort of stream yourself, or get involved in any sort of scenario battles, then feel free to join my Discord. The link is down below in the description. As always, guys. Uh, very much appreciated as well if you want to set in any replays uh, the best place to send them into is uh, also the, um, the discord link down below i've got arable axe throwers here they are uh, already getting shot up they need to be careful they're going to get outranged by any sort of bow unit that the things throw forward here already they're getting focused down i mean there's also arable axe guards here that are you know very vulnerable to definitely all these javelins here these carnage sentries and just set up and they can start to javi into all the uh, Erebor Axe Guards if they want to. We'll see what happens here. In come the javis and down go some of those dwarves. Really good volleys into them. They need to do another volley of that. And you know, that could really do the damage that they need to give themselves a chance in that fight. It's 2v3, but even still, uh, I wouldn't rate their chances. Well, actually, it's more like a, a 3v4 in favor of the dwarves, actually. Yeah, they're absolutely peppering that Erebor Axe Guard there. That's really nice. Good starts there from these things along the front, really. There's a lot of dwarves still to get through, and Dane's actually getting focused down here. Look at this. He's getting absolutely focused. Dane is, yeah, bloodied up. Look at this guy. Dane's, you know, been in king now for many, many years, and he's getting absolutely focused down. Jeez, poor guy. 41 out of 100 of his bodyguard left. The very egg riders charging in again here, getting stuck in. Trying to inflict many losses onto the uh, infantry. All the dwarves before their own infantry goes in. See here, it looks like yeah, the Mantra Claimers are getting battered quite a bit. And yeah, Dane is getting focused down here. Look at that. He's nearly dead already. Uh, the assault into the city hasn't really begun just yet. They have uh, just landed on the walls. They've got clan spearmen that are landing. They've got a whole bunch of archers and stuff waiting up here at Dale. And it looks like we are seeing some of their units now come off the walls and they are going to... Uh, I guess try and get uh, the, the streets captured. We'll see. Balance well. of power is ever so slightly out of favor of the uh, forces of uh, evil. Uh, they have 1,000, uh, sorry, 10,000, not even 10,000, 11,000. And they're up against just under 10,000. Dano has already died here, and that's going to do some morale damage to the dwarves. I mean, of a faction to lose your general too, it's not a bad one. The dwarves have good morale anyway. 
but uh, it still will not be great. They lost just like that in a big, big loss. There you go, the low crew getting stuck in. A fairly even match up until the fourth ever so slightly have the advantage. But uh, only just, I would have said. See here, actually, they are losing these fights a little bit, the Arab Axe Warriors. Got a uh, ballista as well back here, which is epic. He's got this giant ballista trying to support his dwarven brothers on the front line. Aim, boys, just aim anywhere. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of those East Slings in front of you to hit. And uh, they actually, I think, can duel. There is a fire spitter as well for the uh, East Slings as well. So they, they also have their own weapons of war. Much smaller, less impressive. Uh, ballista, but you know, can equally do some decent damage, you know, with that. That thing spits fire. It's very, very cool. Yeah, we're going to see uh, Clan Axman here come forward. They're going to start trying to jabby their way through. We're going to see uh, Carnage Sentries also set up. They're going to try and jabby. Looks like Dwarven Spears here. They need to try and focus those guys down if they can. Just hit anything you can hit. And you get the jabbies off, and it looks like actually the Dwarven Spears are going to uh, react. They're not going to allow the Carnage Sentries to get all their javelins off. In you go, there go the spears. Challenges kind of sentries. Yeah, this is a battle that did historically, well, happen in the lore of Lord of the Rings. It was, in fact, a battle that's having simultaneously at the same time as the Battle of the Minas Tirith. So while uh, the Orcs of Mordor were fighting Gondor in the south, uh, the dwarves were fighting the Eastlings in the north around Dale and Erebor and they actually did come down to a final stand around uh, Erebor I think Dale was lost and both King uh, Bran who we do have here as well today in this battle and King Dane both died uh, and then Thorin became like the guy that uh, sort of like fought uh, and led the dwarves and we do have Thorin here as well Thorin the third Stonehelm that's how he uh, he becomes king uh, on the battlefield and uh, yeah, he is here. And uh, Dane has died, I think, actually. So already uh, he is king. So this is quite handy that, you know, Thorin's already here, ready. It's a bit sort of lore accurate already seeing Dane die. Thorin has ascended the throne on the battlefield. Hopefully he can lead his dwarven brethren to, to victory. Or will he fail? Will he fail? We'll see, cab charge going into shock. And down here, though, nice little charge there into some of the, uh, looks like barrack guard down here. Yeah. Really tough, tough units for the uh, Stormriders to try and break through, but they're doing some good damage as well to the uh, the shock down here. I mean, these Clan Axemen are just going to get ripped through by things like Mansion Famous. It's just not going to be a fair fight. The armor difference is incredible. Yeah, Clan Axemen, they're already losing. Just, there is a lot of capsule massing back here for these things. They need to try and Get that into play if they can try and break through with the cab. Uh, looks like this flank over here with the carnage sentries is actually breaking a little bit. You're going to need to get maybe some javy volleys into the side, whether they can do that here. This would be a good spot to try. The uh, Erebor Axe Imagery is showing its back. But we'll see. It looks like they're trying to shoot a few volleys, but not a, not a lot of action being done here. Yeah, more archers. I think it's because they're all obstructed. It's not really helping. Yeah, they are. Uh, unfortunately, this flank here is being broken by Erebor. If you're rooting for Erebor, though, that's great. I mean, that's that's exactly what you want. Dale is now into the, bat, into the fight. We've got, it looks like, some uh, Spear Militia here fighting on the front lines against Clan Spearman. Two pretty low-armoured and pretty, uh, like, rubbish units here. They're not going to be able to, you know, break through each other, probably. I imagine this is going to be in a, a stalemate for quite a while. Uh, it looks like uh, other... Fights are getting underway as well over here. We've got a good little flank here from some Vineland patrollers. I mean, they got really nice uh, side shots into the side of the uh, the fight fighting. They really can't even see. They can hear them blow. So it's just like fire over the side, boys. There's enemies down there. You might hit some friendlies, but that's a risk we have to take. Dale is very much stuck in with the fighting here, being in amongst some of these uh, clan axemen. It looks like more clan spearmen as well going in. So yeah, they're really just trying to break through, but it's going to be tough. Very heavy infantry fighting up against some lights. It's going to be tough. We have a little flank here from Dale as well. Some Dalian uh, cavalry regiment here waiting outside the wall. So we need to say, see whether they can turn that around. But it doesn't seem like the uh, 
attackers have seen that just yet. They might be able to get, sneak in with those cavalry units and get a side charge maybe or two. We'll see. Uh, the front line over here is not looking so great now for these things. There's a lot of wavering going on. Khan, sentries are starting to waver. Loki are starting to lose. I'm going to see some more cab charges, I think, coming in at the moment here. The uh, East thing's getting a little bit more desperate. Let's see where they can get one off. Looks like they're going to try and charge through maybe this gap here. These Arable Axe Warriors, they can break through there and then side charge the spears. It would open up an, a little gap in the line, but we'll see whether it works. They went in to the uh, Axe Infantry. They probably recharged the Roadmen more than they have the Dwarves. Really, yeah, they should side charge into these spears here, which uh, would be a better option. I mean, they could almost probably snuck through anyway. There's a bit of a gap here. I mean, there's about three or four dwarves that are holding it, but they could have maybe tried to break through there. The spears, even these low-tier spears, the dwarves are proving quite the obstacle to break through. We're seeing Variac Bowman go in now, and we're going to see more shock being sent in. Runic Warlords and Runic Savages being sent in. Cav over here is being used to help support this, uh, this flank. It looks like uh, it's not going so well for these things in this forest. Not that we can see too much. They are going in, doing what they can. And the uh, front line now, the responsibility has come to the shock infantry here. Hopefully, these crossbows can't get a decent angle because these runic savages here, though they're pretty damn nasty, they have very low armor. They'll suffer quite a, quite a lot if the missiles get amongst them. But yeah, in they go. Topless men go again, getting stuck in against the walls there. Nearly breaking through already on that first sort of charge. Come on, boys. Break through. It looks like those axes uh, are losing. Or oh, at least one of them is. The healthier one as well. This is not looking like a good flank though over here. There's a lot of dwarves that are being tied down by one very bowman. They're going to need to send in some of these re-rallied units just to help tie them down. We're going to see some shock infantry come over, some runic wars. But yeah, this is not good at all. This is a flank that needs sorting out by these things because uh, otherwise it'll be a dwarven victory out in the field for sure. Uh, Cav is now starting to arrive. It's now showing itself onto the battlefield, and I think these things have reacted in reasonable decent time. We've got clan guards here, also um, some axes that might be able to turn it around and deal with those units. The men have given up and are running for their lives. The Dalian swords here holding on. Alien Swords, yeah, winning that fight, as you'd imagine. It looks like they're winning the one over here as well. I mean, these are the cheaper units going in first to weaken up the Dalian, so hopefully these is where they send up some more elite troops like the Loki Rim, maybe some of their shock. We'll get a bit more of a break through. They also probably could do with setting up some archers, but uh, it looks like we've got Loki Rim Mace now arriving. These elite Eastern troops joining the field, heavily armoured these guys. They used to be really, really OP. This is like they've been nerfed a little bit now. But I uh, will see it. Also, I think one of these corners, I think it's this corner here, you can actually go through. It's a sneaky little, uh, it's actually not a solid. You can see it's already happening here. Yeah, these things already going through this wall. I don't think they're moving too purposefully, but you can actually do it. They actually get a slight flank here. For the daily troops, ever so slight flank. Not really enough to like make a difference, but if, if the uh, daily unit was a bit shorter, the, this uh, Loki unit could have possibly got into the violent patrol zone. It's a full unit of uh, of all ammunition there. Um, but it looks like looks like the right flank over here has been turned around. So it looks like uh, cavalry and a, a bit of infantry here has managed to somehow turn this fight around. We've got uh, Kahar over here managed to break through, and then we have a general as well, Bane the steps going in for some nice rear charges, and the rear charges are worth making the difference here for the. Dwarves. Dwarves are starting to shatter. And it seems like uh, Thorin Stonehelm is being a coward. His first act as king is to be a coward and flee from the battle instead of fight and die here on the battlefield. He's abandoning many of his kin. 
as they get slaughtered by the Eastern men over here. Have here for the uh, the Eastling general Bain and steps here. Even though it's not a great uh, like shock cab unit going in against the uh, Thorin here is going to do some damage. Pulling out though has certainly done serious damage as well. And in goes the Stormrise. They might be able to turn this one around a little bit more. You see here the arable crossbows getting cut off and killed. It looks like some of the dwarves are going to make it back though. We've got two dwarven warriors there and some iron guards which didn't get committed going into the city to invest in there. So it looks like the last stand is going to be inside the city for uh, both uh, forces of good here. So both the dwarves and the men are going to fight and die in here. There's a lot of units still stacked on the top of the hill here. Lots of Dillian spear guards, got violent guards up here and some more swords that are yet to go in and some Lake Town guards. Um, but yeah, it now seems as though the forces of evil are fully committed display. to assaulting Dale. The dwarves have been defeated outside. It is now just down to defeating Dale, pretty much. And they are going in. Last few dwarves are getting surrounded by cavalry. They're getting cut down. It's sad to see. Look at that. It's, just, it's a hard fight, though. I mean, the dwarves have done a good amount of damage. I mean, numbers wise, it's 7,200 against 5,900. I mean, the battle lines, there's a lot of dead Eastlings here as well as dwarves. It's, it's not a, you know, uh, a one sided fight. See the banners here of the Eastlings, you know. They took a lot of losses. A lot of losses. About. And they're still fighting on here. The dwarves are still ex extracting their toll. And I mean, they've got some of their elites, like the Iron Guards, inside the city still. And they've got Dalian Spear Guards already on this wall as well, on this get bridge here, just defending it. Uh, it seems like a strange position to have them. But I guess maybe they're just to stop the uh, attackers from using this gate as a way to get in, because it's actually pretty banged up. 82% damage. Um, all, yeah, and then gate damage 79%. I don't really know what the difference is there, but the damage is pretty high. So literally all it would take is probably like an axe unit just to knock it down. Uh, not even a ram, and you could probably get through pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, we'll see whether they give that a go. It seems though even the Vineland uh, patrols with their still haven't even fired a shot. See these uh, Ruby warriors here trying to Recycle their charges, get the best charge bonus they can. We have got watch post sentries here. Not a great spear, you know, but a little bit better than the spear militia. And you can see, actually, I think they're trying to bait out the Dalian swords. Swords here, yeah, doing okay, but nothing too insane just yet. The 
We've got to like cut through this final daily sword. So it's, it's taken a lot of units to kill. And then, I mean, there's just so many more. The shipment here, which apparently got jabbies back now. I did not know that these guys got their jabbies back, but I guess they got a bit of a buff in a way. Shipmen now have jabbies, which I actually did petition for for quite a while uh, to get them the jabby effect, just to make them a bit more useful. Uh, they are certainly uh, going to be very useful in this siege, I imagine, now. Just able to jabby over the top of these combats. Do it down to need to. I mean, from here, they could probably jabby over and hit these guys if they wanted to. Just need to be careful they don't jabby their own men. got in here now they are losing in this fight so he's still showing that they're not that great in melee but they need to get those javies off a bit like some of the lesser eastling units they need to just get those javelins off first and then they can actually you know maybe make, make a difference the archers actually being mounted on the walls here so this is going to stop any hope of sort of uh, just charging and trying to break down the gate here they've got archers up here these are the fire arrows as well i think they're trying to yeah set a light spire fitters here the spire fitters being attempted to be set alight how ironic but yeah they are uh Having no joy there, it's setting them alight, just killing a few of the crew members, which I'm sure that the East things can take losses for. It actually looks like now they're going to be shifting their troops back towards this flank over here, and they're going to try and use that, these uh, forces, to maybe just reinforce and bolster any sort of attacks. But they're pretty battered. It's going to be the main force is going to come from the troops already in the city and those just outside that are waiting still from the other two armies. The Dwarven forces, like the guys attacking the Dwarves, They've done their bit, they've fought, they've kind of beaten their, their enemies. Not much more they can do. We've got loads of units here. Look at all these archers waiting on bardings here. We've got some daily marksmen. We have got some cheap units as well, like yeoman here, but they, you know, can still be pretty useful, uh, massed with uh, more elite units. And they're just waiting for the right units to go for. I mean, they're waiting for like things like shock, like the runic savages, or the pole arms that are waiting outside the walls here, like these locum halberds. They're waiting for those units to come inside so they can focus those down. Um, but yeah, the halberds here, and they're all just facing in this direction because they're scared of the cav over there, which then you just need to keep an eye on. Um, and make sure it doesn't just charge through. So yeah, they're almost forming like a wall of spears and pole arms here to make sure the cav can be no use uh, on this side of the battlefield at least. But yes, these things slowly being bled dry of units that can't, like, that are not vulnerable to our archers. Like the swords and the spears that are in. Yeah, they're not really getting targeted by archers. And that's fine. They are usually the first wave to go in. But once they're dead, the next wave is very vulnerable to the archers. here are now eventually going to be broken which is good to see if you're rooting for the attackers but I mean there's a next line is waiting it's iron guards over here they are waiting and they're going to be uh, a, a very different sort of force to try and break through here we've got some uh, shipment as well they're just being broken up the cab actually is one of the units of the cab is now back inside the city over on this side here and it's been shifted here it looks like it maybe was going to sally out this gate here potentially 
or at least it looks like he might. With the pathfinding, it's changing his mind. Or maybe it's going to counter charge the Loki or Maceman Assault there, who knows. But yeah, it does seem as though they are uh, they're waiting for the right opportunity. I mean, the Cav is now, like the Cav power is now with the defenders, ironically. The Cav for the attack has pretty much all been used and sort of breaking through that Dwarven line. But uh, yeah, it does seem as though the Cav can't really be used that well inside Dale. It's very narrow streets. It's just, I thought he was going to go out the city uh, there, but he decided to change his mind now. Just staying inside, looking for an opportunity to go for something. There are archers and things like that that could be used to try and help out this fight. And it looks like the uh, Eastlings here are kind of using those uh, dodgy streets again to try and get a few flanking charges here. Locrium infantry going after some of these uh, watch post sentries. I think these are watch post sentries. Uh, spear militia. They look so similar, you can't really tell the difference between the two tier units. Not an easy fight there for the Spin Militia. The Locrium will happily take those kills to, as you know, get some extra kills there. And it looks like we have seen a bit of a breakthrough on the side here. So yeah, it looks like the Eastlings of the Locrium Maceman have broken through. The shipment here, though, are going to uh, stop them in the path. Another unit of Locrium, though, has managed to get through here. And it's now cut off from reinforcement. Getting engaged by Galian Swords. going to try and break through and there you go Dale surrounds this unit here and basically gives it its fate death destruction and there you go and a general of the ally is dead whose general has died there oh it's this oh it's the Bane of the Steps general that we saw earlier come in he's actually just uh, trying to come through I think he's just got focused down by that battery of archers there waiting and they're shooting now at the runic archers here waiting outside the walls they need to fall these guys back they're very much in range um, but yeah, that is unfortunate. There you go, the bait in the steps. Uh, losing their general. I mean, I don't know how much of the army they had left. Uh, it looks like actually a lot of his mass rather than his very egg bowmen here. Uh, they're exhausted. Yeah, they're wavering because of their exhaustion. Yeah, that is not great. So that is going to be a big loss there for these things. It's very finely in the balance at this moment in time, like balance power wise. 5,700 against 4,900. I mean, there are a couple of uh, hundred dwarves left, but most of the defenders are just men. So it's pretty evenly matched when it comes to sort of like a tower, uh, like a factions and races involved. It's like elves and dwarves, they're outnumbered even just slightly. It's pretty much in their favor because they're OP. But uh, it's mostly men of Dale. There's a few dwarves, which can, you know, bolster a few defenses. There's only two Iron Guard units. Here's two are daily, uh, a dwarven swords, like dwarven warriors. Not that great. Uh, we're going to see a spear unit actually ship forward here. This is a uh, clan guard unit. It's going to form square, I think, here. Because the scene cav is approaching. And uh, yeah, this choke point here, which was also another way we were looking to try and open it up. Now looking very tough to try and break through. Iron Guard waiting here. And we've got Vinelard, uh, Vinelard? Vineland patrollers waiting on the wall over here to try and uh, sort of you know, shoot any units uh, in the flank to try and attack that Iron Guard. So uh, yeah, a very tough place now to assault over on that side. You can see here, it's not looking so great for the forces of evil at the moment. They've kind of run into a wall of defenders and are really struggling to break through. Shipman here again, got him probably in a fight that they uh, that they can't win. They're against Loku and uh, Mason, but you know, they're just, you know, weaken them for their comrades. Chippen 
Sounds like you're winning. I mean, they were, oh, they were for a second. They're now back to combat even. Uh, looks like we're going to see a lot of forces being shifted down to the southern front over here. So here we're seeing a clan spearmen, and more clan spearmen. That general has been sent down there as well. So they are going to try and press on with the uh, clan guards and some more clan guards here. Try and break through. I mean, if they do use up their ammo shooting spears, I mean, that's a good use of uh, waste of ammo there for the uh, for the attackers. I mean, it saves their uh, shock infantry and their pole arms are being shot at and spears being killed. I mean, they're not going to be great on the attack anyway. So they're being used... Uh, up as like archer fodder, not bad at all. Uh, looks like the spears are going in over here as well. Clan guards, they are a, a heavy spear infantry units. So they're going in against shipmen here. And a pretty good missile block, so the shipmen don't want to be using their javies against them, really. I mean, even if they do, then I mean, they'll kill a few, but it won't look like masses. There's a gap actually that is. Pathfinder will through that gap and get them in amongst the archers. Don't think he could. There you go, the javis go off, they fire while the melee. I don't like that this is a thing that you can do. I think it's very cheesy. Basically, it means you don't miss a shot, and the uh, yeah, the attackers take horrendous casualties there. Should not be allowed. It's just ridiculous. And we're going to see some little spears, some spear militia, so nothing crazy being sent over to support. And we're seeing shock infantry as well, some... Uh, units here being sent over. They're pretty weak at this point already uh, from their fights on the other side of the battlefield. I think the main target is King Brand over here, the uh, Dalian King, trying to be uh, focused down if we can kill him, then might help break the morale of uh, Dale a bit more. I heard the watch post sentries. They do, I guess, look a lot different. They're in brown, I guess. They're a little bit, look a little bit more elite, a little bit more better trained, I should say, elite. Fighting up against troops pretty uh, even to themselves, like the clan spear, and nothing too uh, too scary down there for them to deal uh, with, it would seem. And again, on this side here, more axes going in against the swords. So, yes, yeah, trying to back this uh, this fight up a little bit better. Okay, I wonder whether, uh, like, a, I mean, it's been blocked now, the spear militia here. I think maybe I've seen that that gap is a possible option. I mean, it's looking a little bit more filled in now. So they need to try and get to that archer blob if they can and try and take them out. Either shoot them or just try and uh, just try and charge them. Fighting goes on here. These uh, locum infantry, they may be heavily armored, well trained, and they're slowly plodding forward. They're taking so many losses on their way there. The crazy bird like looking armor. It does kind of like, I don't know why, but like the, uh, the arms kind of look like feathers almost. Yeah, the Delian Swords backing up in here. That's going to help sort of seal their fate. There is more locum macemen ready to go in, but. Whether they'll break through, we'll see. I just said Lotri and Macemen are definitely better than Dalian Swords, so in a one-on-one, -on -one, they definitely got a good chance, but I wouldn't say in this scenario it's ever going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. It seems like Dale is stacking multiple units right now to try and hold each choke point. Guard also, you know, helping make this a really tough assault. The city is still burning. It's uh, doing some morale damage. We're at 48%. It's down to minus three now, but... DDD's kind of made it so that morale of um, like isn't like like so affected by a burning city. They kind of like debuffed um, that, ab that sort of ability and that danger that you have. Uh, also, a good little move here by the uh, Errol player. If you hadn't realised, he's actually defending the right, uh, like beyond the stairway. So it means that these guys can't be attacked. No other stairways. So these yard probs are pretty much safe until uh, the. Uh, yeah, until they like um, 
I don't know, either the shot or like the iron guards get taken out. But even then, they could just bring up more reinforcements. Uh, a move that we definitely could have done, actually, now thinking about it, is we could have got some of these towers, could have pushed them across the bridge, and then we could have uh, maybe tried to land here. But who's to say that the cow wouldn't have then side out, tried to slow us down, something like that. You just never know, and it'd be really tough to uh, to try and deal with that sort of issue. But that would have maybe been a way to try and neutralize this wall here and open up another front on this side here. Even if it's just weakened units, just open up another front. The uh, but it might have just been the day where just, you know, tightened up their defense at the top of the hill. They've got loads here. Looks like the daily players never really planned to hold from the walls. They planned to just, you know, hold from inside the city and make it as tough as possible. Got very active Bowman going in, trying to help out the Eastern line. And now reinforced by Dalian Spearman, which I mean, I mean, I love this Dalian armor, I really do. I think this is my favorite sort of like armor that they have available. Like the Dalian uh, Marksman, Dalian Swordsman, Dalian Spearman, sort of like the generic mid tier uh, sword unit, like like mid tier armor. It's awesome, it really does. For Clan Spearman going up, that's not really going to be the answer to break through. I mean, they might get through that shipment unit, but I don't think they'll get through much more than this. We'll see, it may go. Oh! Ham the cameras are right pain in these little narrow streets. There we go. In they go. Trying to battle way their way through the shipman. I actually put a full bag. I guess we try and bait down the shipman. Oh, and then they're just cycling in these runic warriors. Really nice charge. And they'll cut through these guys. We're seeing some of the elite axes now getting stuck in. These guys used to call wars of rune. Now runic warlords. Uh, yeah, just kind of go carve through the little shipment unit. They probably get through the daily and swordsmen as well. Unless they get focused down, which it looks like these uh, daily marksmen and other bow units are trying to do, trying to shoot them to pieces. We'll see if they can manage that. Bands of power is not looking so good for even now. 4,200 against 4,000. We did get a lot of losses trying to break through. And the Iron Guard might have inflicted for several hundred themselves. I don't know. They're doing pretty well. So you stopped burning. It's now ashes over on this side here. The yeah, also the archers like on this uh, like pedestal here have been doing some really good damage. We've got a general coming in Kahar. He's just trying to get inside the city. To try and get the pole arms in. Try and get them into the front lines. If we can, might make a difference. The other pole arms for the uh, defenders are like way over here. They've got like a late town guard looking in the wrong direction for some reason. Another one on the final defense. So not exactly near the front lines. If the Eastings can get them and shift them down towards the, uh, the south, southern quarter over here, they might be able to, you know, win a few of these choke points. And there's a way from the archer spam as well, so there's always a chance then that you can, uh, you can win. Again, the infantry trying to break through. Act with shock infantry against spears, but the spear unit in, in mind is an iron guard. So even though, like, shock beats spears usually, I don't know, man. Not with these. Uh, not with these iron guards. They're just unbreakable, unstoppable. Really are. And uh, it looks like over here. Looks like we've got Galian Swords shipment here. Holding on. Looks like the uh, the yeah the Runic Warriors keep getting cycled in and out. It seems like they're trying to uh, the Runic uh, Ward. Sorry. Uh, yeah, getting cycled in and out. Trying to get the best charge bonus for the shot from the field that they can. The card is sentries in here as well. Must be out of ammo. Get a shock here. It's getting shot at again. It's getting a lot of focus from the uh, from the archers. I guess that you know means that somewhere else another unit might be able to break through. It looks like over here, there's uh, runic wards are getting shot down as well. Actually, Oosh. seems like a lot of ammo left for quite a few of these units. The defenders, spears here holding on. Got a mass of eastern men in front of them to deal with. Right now, it's looking like the Battle of Dale is turning it in favor of the forces of 
a good actually yeah they now have the number advantage it's now 3,800 attackers oh sorry defenders against 2,300 attackers so yeah they have about 500 man advantage and the, yeah the balance power is shifting in favor it's gonna be an all-out assault I think now try and give themselves a chance of breaking through they need to pull off a few of these units they can find a breakthrough and get to the top of the hill we've got a chance Brand might need to die as well and we've got a, a barding general here still got full ammo jeez and that is just insane um, but yeah they need to uh Probably get rid of those units, those two generals, and try and just, you know, destabilize morale. But uh, I think the Barding General has been kept up there. It looks like these, uh, these Iron Guards it should have been outside the walls, really. They should have fought and died out there. The, uh, the Dwarves should have uh, stayed out there and fought to the death. But they came inside like cowards. And they've stopped this assault for sure in its tracks. Yeah, you can see the Iron Guard here, still trying to hold on. They still have half their unit, 52 out of 100. I bet they have plenty of kills. They've got three chevrons as well. We are seeing a bit of an offensive being made here by Dale. You can see Dale in swords and spears moving forward with a backup of cavalry here. So, so they might make a, a push. There is a Khan of Sentries waiting, and we've got Clan Guards here as well. So it's going to be tough to still break through there against the Eastlings. They have plenty of reserves who are to throw in. And looks like we've still got Runic Warriors relative strength the pole arms have also made an appearance now inside the city so they uh, can just get committed it looks like the most of the archers are out of ammo so the pole arms are not going to be so susceptible to that sort of assault and we've got a, uh, a fight over here with the warlords against the shipmen those shipmen are dying they're getting cut open by those big axes a funny shaped blade anyway Here we go, Rune Wars going in, looks like gonna cycle out these units. I never know if this is always a good idea, you can see here, and now look at that. Because if you fall it back, the unit then just gets stuck, and it just then stuff. And sometimes it gets stuck, and it's losing now, it lost troops necessarily. And yeah, it's back to losing combat then. It shouldn't be losing against archers and shipmen. Just leave it in there, it's doing fine. We've got the Rune Wars now going in, and they're trying to get stuck in against the shipmen here. And I think they're gonna get jabbed in the face, just like those clan guards did earlier. They're gonna get jabbed in the face. They're gonna lose a whole load of troops unnecessarily. And they got archers here they're going in to sort of bulk up that, uh, that attack, maybe trying to absorb some of these uh, jabby volleys. But yeah, it's not looking great there at all on that flank. But they're nearly through, uh, in, like through these units, but there's still more. Still more Dalian troops here waiting for them. Shipmen now, you know, are, uh, yeah, are losing the Barding's going into combat. They are a pretty decent high region at Heavy Bow Infantry unit. They can do okay in there. They look like they're pretty much out of ammo. They might uh, be sent in soon. It's like uh, Cav as well as waiting for an opportunity to see if there's a breakthrough. I mean, the Iron Guard, actually the Iron Guard are fine. There's Dwarven Warriors and they're supporting them now. And the offensive on this side here has begun. Looks like we've got yeah, Dwarven Warriors and also Dalian troops here. Forward. So yeah, one of the two day, uh, Dwarven units being sent over here, the Dwarven Warrior units, I should say, being sent in. Dwarven boys get stuck in, sending these things back in. And there's less than 10 minutes now left of the battle. I mean, it's looking very much like it's going to be a victory for the good guys at the moment. Uh, we'll see whether the uh, forces of evil can turn this one back around. They are winning in a few areas here. All it's going to take is a couple of breakthroughs. And they're into the uh, sort of the city proper itself at the back. Uh, but there's still a fair few reserves. And still haven't seen like, these violent guards getting thrown in here yet. Uh, Kahar is, uh, also looks like he's getting shot at free at the moment by archers. It looks like that might be... Uh, a yeoman unit there, I don't think it's doing too much damage. Pole arms aren't out on the front line. They might make a difference in some of these uh, melee fights, we'll see. But yeah, they have the range over the dwarves now with those pole arms keeping those uh, swordsmen at bay.
carnage centuries here. I think they're getting shot on the back. This is the problem why the uh, bad guys are winning that one. The, uh, oh, losing that one, sorry. Uh, the violent patrollers are getting good rear shots and yeah, just causing their units here to uh, be beaten back. The Dalian and Dwarven units here, yeah, winning quite easily. As you can see, the volleys coming in now, really helping the Dalian troops. And, yeah, the carnage centuries and the other Eastern units, you know, busy worrying about what's in front of them. And then they're just getting shot in the back, right between the uh, shoulder blades and going down pretty quickly, like a sack of spuds. Uh, we have got a cav unit now that is uh, moving towards the uh, the walls. It looks like it's going to try and go for a breach or maybe even the gate here, uh, try and get through one of these ways, try and get in uh, to the back lines of these things here. That would be pretty disastrous. Looks like Kahara is being sent over here as well to try and uh, deal with it. We've got a... Uh, a spear unit, or sorry, a polearm unit here that could also support this fight if it wanted to and try and, you know, scare off that cav unit. We've still got one runic warlord here, a healthy rune, rune warlord that's yet to go in. Um, Brand has also been sent up here and is now uh, shooting down into this fight. So yeah, King Brand is, you know, where is he actually? That's not Brand himself. Oh no, this is the barding unit, sorry, it's not the Brand at all. Uh, but Brand, I think, must be back safe at the, uh, at the settlement. There he is, yeah. At, like the top of the, of the city pretty bloodied up though he's not seen any action he's just been shot at quite a lot brand uh you know grand i think he's the grandfather of bard i think he is oh look, sorry not grandfather the grandson of, uh, of bard hold on still poking away doing a bit There you go, shock and go again. Pole arms being sent in as well. breaking through like those uh, dwarves there they've been forced back now spears being sent in I think the iron guard might oh no they're not dead at all they've just been fallen back as well 40 of them left the counter offensive here looks like it's also starting to grind to a halt Dale is yeah struggling to break through clan guards are now pole arms as well backing up this attack here we've got a uh, runic warlord general as well trying to you know support that and looks like yeah they, they should outnumber these uh, these daily units here might see some spear guys get, get thrown in there and we've got a pole arm poke off over here we've got uh lokirim Haldo's going up against from the late town guard to see how that goes but i mean out of thought the guardsman late town guard with a height advantage might win that one i don't know if that really does make a difference but late town guard are definitely less uh pole arms than that lokirim halbert it is but with the height advantage and also number advantage, they might win it. Uh, we will see. Uh, the fight outside the walls that Cav, you know, did get dealt with. It looks like Kahar actually did manage to catch it. And it looks like he's going to deal with it. Kahar not having much joy in this game, but, you know, has managed to charge down some dwarves and is now killing some cavalry there of Dales. And looks like we're going to see a pole arm unit here. Uh, this flank over here has broken for these things. It was going to be a matter of time. That barding general there has just been focusing them down. Really. Now the uh, Polom's here, staying out of that like barding range. Are going to get ready to deal with the Lake Town Guard. I look at the Lake Town Guard coming forward. We'll see who can win this one. But yeah, in go the two pole arms. And it's good old poke off. See who has. I, I mean, looking at like the sheer models, it looks like the uh, Loki Room Halberdiers have the longer pole arms. You can see like the uh, Lake Town Guards here aren't even really poking back at all. A couple of them are over here. If you look at the halberds, the further along the line you go, they're actually managed to poke these late time guardsmen without really getting poked back themselves. There you go, a bit of a pike push might help them out. Late time guards are all losing decisively. Oof. That is rough to see. A little victory there maybe at the end, as it looks like, yeah, most fronts now look like these things are getting beaten back. And it looks like victory is going to be for the forces of good in this one here. We haven't seen them win many battles recently. No 
Grim uh, pole arms here. So they're just going to keep impaling these spear guards, giving them some easy shish kebab kills. It looks like, yeah, and various other areas are getting broken through. Kahar actually has managed to uh, win his combat. To I don't know if he's going to win against the, the second rallied. cavalry regiment, though, and also the spears now getting around the sides. That could come to cause a problem for Kahar here in his black armor. Pretty badass. Oh, he's going to go for a side charge. There's a few of these spear missions here, but not really a lot. Then coming the clan guards, I guess, to get a rear charge here. Don't worry, these guys are here from some reserves from nowhere. Coming to support their, their lead. I don't know what Kahar is. He's like a great a, a chief or something. The no they managed to get a silver favor. chevron of this uh, this general unit here. So it's pretty incredible. Yeah, the pole arms here nearly winning. The halberds here could then maybe turn around and support either Kahar or support with the clan guards against this fight here. They've got a few options what they want to do. But uh, yeah, we're just pretty much at the end. I'm just going to fast forward now as we kind of get through these final few stages, just waiting to see what happens really in this sort of fight. Uh, it looks like the uh, counter-offensive over on the side here has ground to a hole. It actually looks like the East Slings have done a good job of stabilizing there. Uh, but this looks like it's about to be broken through. With support of those violent patrollers who have been shooting from up there, it looks like, yeah, the East Slings are going to get broken. Uh, runic warlords aren't going to hold on against daily and swords and other stuff kahar's going in oh oh yeah this was a i f totally forgot about this we had such a pathfinding like mess up here so basically kahar wanted to go out of the through the wall here and attack daily and cav regiment just try and maybe get a charge off on them um but yeah instead you ran into the pole arms here and it just like screwed the unit over and it's just like what like the unit wanted to go out through the gate rather than just out through the wall, which is right here. So I don't know what happened there. But that cost uh, cost me my general and then my army. And uh, that basically cost, uh, well, didn't cost us the game. It was already lost by that point. Day. But it does mean as though we are going to see a, uh, a defeat here for the Eastlings. It was just a one too much. I maybe gave the Dale a little bit too much inside the settlement. That's what we kind of came to the conclusion. Um, should, have, should have had a little less because like, even the violent guards and stuff didn't really get uh, it's the action we should have just didn't need them so we should have just like got rid of them maybe some archers as well because you kind of forget that even with their archer generals that they kind of have extra uh, they have extra bows then uh, which I kind of forgot about I was like oh yeah they totally are like bow units um, so yeah they actually outbowed like, these things and they could have then done with maybe making these things a slight bit stronger but maybe the extra units even if they're chaff would have maybe made the difference, who knows. But uh, yeah, pole on. And uh, the cav rear charge there is going to pretty much destroy that uh, other general unit. And he's probably going to die there. And uh, yeah, you're going to see uh, probably him uh, loot, him uh, routing in a moment. And that will then cause the rest of his army to rout as well. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this battle. If you did, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here and a comment show support. It really does help out the channel. And uh, we'll quickly end the replay and have a quick look at some of the end results. Uh, I was playing this one, as I said, as uh, one of the Easting armies. Got 256 kills with my uh, Kahar general there. One of my uh, Carnage sentries got 183 kills. Runic Wards, 216. The uh, Pole Arms actually did okay, getting 144, 137. Archers, 172 kills. And one of the Storm Riders, 165 kills. And we've got Bulk playing as like the Variag sort of like contingent of the Easting Army. that has got a lot of Variags in his army. 167 kills with the Bane of the Steps. Uh, then he's got his Variag Axeman, 103, 127 kills. 141 kills with the Mace, 133 with another. 210 with the Variag Bowman, 213, 209. They did very well. And his uh, Riders here, his Variag Riders, 122. Then we have Zach playing as the Third Eastling Army, one of the armies inside the city. His Runic Warriors getting 158 kills. His Mace, 80, 93. Uh, and then his arch is getting 103, 120, uh, 162. Then we have Ike playing as the final leasing army. Uh, his maceman doing pretty well, uh, getting like 185, 156, 252. His savages, 130 kills. His halberds, 110. And then his uh, runic archers, 236 kills. And his fire spirit getting 56 kills. And we have Mythic playing as one of the Erebor armies. Zero kills with Dane as he fell, getting focused down by archers. Um, his magic claim is getting 287 kills here. 100 kills with his Erebor axe guards. 
And then he's got Dawn Barrett Guard getting 186 kills. And his Iron Guards here, one of them getting 472 kills. It's pretty incredible. And then his Axe Warriors, yeah, all getting triple kill, triple figure kills there. Then we have K player playing as the uh, one of the Dalian armies, getting 120 kills with the Bardings there, 181 kills with the Dalian Swords. Uh, and then, yeah, most of his... Um, other infantry didn't do that great. His arch is getting 211 kills and 129 kills with the Dale Cavalry Regiment. Then we have Jackaboy playing as uh, King Brand's Dalian Army, 142 kills with him. His shipman getting 246 kills, 264, 364. These guys did insane with their javies. Dalian Swords, 326 kills, 209 with another there. The Watch Post Sentry is getting 165 kills. Uh, the pole arms 104 and then like his marksman 249 kills 195 and 262 with the bardings there then we have cheeky fool playing as the uh, other Erebor army yes thorin also struggled to get kills 41 before he fell 111 kills with the dwarven warriors 100 kills there with the Erebor axes his Erebor axe warriors getting 119 uh, 199 kills 211 182 with another there uh, Dwarven Spears, 100 kills there. And then, yeah, like the Crossbows getting 130, 176, which is still pretty reasonable for a land battle for them. But there you go, guys. That is today's Battle of Dale. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.